All right. Imagine you are 14. You walk to school every day hungry. Your mom is recently unemployed. She can't afford to feed you three meals a day. Day after day, you get tired of being hungry. So one day on the way to school, a man approaches you, offering you a way to make money. You aren't old enough for a real job yet, so you take up the offer. Later that day, you're waiting on the street corner, getting ready for a deal. You're willing to do anything just to be able to feed yourself. Is this a crime? People often think that an individual chooses to commit a crime, but in reality, crime can be circumstantial. My proposition is that poverty causes people to turn to crime. I'm going to argue that drug use is a result of poverty and that people use crime to overcome poverty. My first claim is that people turn to drugs to cope with poverty. The um, according to the National Council on Drug Abuse, a person in an impoverished situation may abuse drugs or alcohol as a way to cope with the dangerous environment that he or she lives in, as a way to deal with financial stress, or as a way to cope with physical or emotional abuse. For many people, drugs offer an escape from the harsh reality that they face on a daily basis. The high becomes the only thing they look forward to. According to the Bureau of Prisons, drug offenses make up 46.6% of the, prison, the inmates in our prison system. This is almost half. Drugs are not only used, but they're also being sold. According to the National Council on Drug Abuse, many times drugs and alcohol are easily accessible in impoverished neighborhoods, where some people actually sell drugs in hope of overcoming poverty. This brings me to my next point. My second claim is that individuals turn to crime to make money. When people are desperate enough, they're willing to do anything to put the next meal on their table. Some even turn to crime as a way to make money in order to support themselves or even a family. And many times in low-income areas, people abandon their education. This causes them to be confined to minimum wage jobs. According to City Lab, there is no county in America where a minimum wage job can support a family. Without a diploma, it makes it difficult to find a job. In many instances, it's easier to steal than to continue an education. Without an education, it's much harder to make the money necessary to support a family. According to PBS, 68% of males in prison did not receive a high school diploma. This doesn't come as a surprise. In conclusion, poverty causes people to turn to drugs, to cope with emotional stress, and turn to other crimes and hope to, and hope to cope with financial stress. For many, crime is not a choice, but a way to stay alive. Thank you. All right, the visualization at the beginning, I think, is a pretty good attention device. You identify what your proposition is reasonably well. I do think that there are a lot of things that are connected to each other, crime and poverty and drug use. Uh, and the whole, there may, in fact, be an argument about which is the cause of the others. Uh, I think you're going to run into a response from the uh, refutation speaker where some of the arguments are going to be about which is the cause and which is the effect. And I think that'll be a, an interesting illustration of one of the reasoning issues that we're going to talk about. You do preview what the supporting points are going to be, so I think that that helps structure things. Um, the first point you've got some information on. I think you make a pretty good start on it. I do think it needs to be developed a little bit more. You had a, statistic, a couple of statistics there that I thought were pretty effective, but the quote that you had was very speculative about what it is that drives people to these things. Um, it makes, you know, and with you, when you start with your example about uh, somebody who's starving, there's no explanation about why these people are starving in light of whatever other things might be available to them. You know, the, I don't you know, uh, why a 14-year-old is not able to get a meal is beyond me, uh, given all of the programs that are available, given the fact that most of the schools that are around uh, provide free food to uh, kids in school. So 
there, you know, your hypothetical needs to be tangi more tangible. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I'm just saying you got to show me that it happens. You can't just make stuff up because I'm sitting here thinking, well, <coughs> first of all, that mother's negligent and she hasn't fed her kid for you know, a long period of time. And second of all, why isn't that kid getting food from all of the programs that are available, that kind of thing? And then it's all premised on this idea that nobody is getting any attention paid to them, and so the only choice they have then are the drugs, and that's the problem. So that's gonna be one of those arguments too. And I just think you needed to make a better argument there that you know, despite what efforts we have, this is that kind of rebuttal issue that we were talking about that's gonna be sitting in people's head. That's one of those questions that happens to be sitting there that jumped on me. All right. Um, uh, the second point uh, where you're talking about uh, the way crime becomes the alternative, I think that it's, again, a little speculative on this. I know that uh, the connection to uh, the drugs is asserted, and you've got a good statistic there that kind of connects those sorts of things. But yeah, I think you might be making a, a big inferential leap, and this is another place where a little bit more data would be helpful. So the, the speech I thought was nicely delivered. I could tell what arguments you were trying to make. Um, I think your proof needs to be a little bit stronger, and you, know, you had a good summary. All right, thank you.